Okay, continuing question six on the derivatives. We have a problem L asks for the derivative of 3x plus 7 over 5x minus 4. So this is a quotient rule question. This is a t over b. So we'll take the derivative f prime of x is the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. The top is 3x plus 7. The derivative of that is 3, 3 plus 0, which is 3. The bottom function is 5x minus 4. The derivative of that is just 5 minus 0, which is 5. So I'm going to take that information and plug it in. So bottom function, 5x minus 4 times t prime, which is 3, minus the top function, 3x plus 7 times b prime, which is 5, all divided by the bottom squared, 5x minus 4 all squared. I'm going to simplify and multiply the 3 through the bracket and the 5 through the second bracket. We'll get 15x minus 12 minus 15x minus 35 all divided by 5x minus 4 all squared. So two things happened there. One was in that second bracket, the 5 was multiplied by each term, and there's a minus sign in front, and that minus has to hit both pieces that come out. Okay, we get the 15, the minus 15 cancel each other, and then negative 12 minus 35, negative 47, over 5x minus 4, all squared. And there's all types of other ways you could do this, but this is probably the best way to do it. Okay, the next problem, problem M, involves a product rule, which we haven't used yet. There's a whole bunch of those coming up. So I'll write down the product rule. The product rule says if you take the derivative of a product of two terms, and I know that in your previous calculus course you probably call those two terms F and G, but oh my god, it's already called F. Why are you making why are they making formulas with F meaning two different things, two different places. Just like with the quotient rule, I called something T and something B because it's not likely your functions are going to be called that. For the product rule, I'm going to call them A and B. A times B. And written this way, the derivative of A times B is A multiplied by B prime plus B multiplied by A prime. I like this formula, I like this formulation because it says ABBA, which is a, a band that I think like I'm old, but I don't think I'm this old. I should know what ABBA is. Maybe you know what ABBA is. Anyway. One of the big problems with product rules is that they hide. It's really easy to miss. A product rule will always be needed when you have two expressions involving x that are multiplied by each other. So inside this particular question, 3x would be my a. And x squared plus 5x would be my b. So if we take the derivative according to the ABBA rule, a times b prime plus b times a prime. So a is 3x with a space for b prime. I think you need a big space for that. Plus b, x squared plus 5x with a space for the a prime. I don't think I need much space for that. Do those calculations off to the side. a is equal to 3x. So a prime is just 3. So I'll plug that in that second box over there. b is where the problem is. b is equal to x squared plus 5x to the power of 7. We're going to need a chain rule on top of the product rule. So this is a this is an interesting question. It's a product rule and a chain rule. Okay. 
I really want to fit on one line. So n times w then minus 1 times w prime. So if we take the derivative, e prime is going to be 7 times x squared plus 5x to the power of 6 multiplied by the derivative of x squared plus 7 uh, of x squared plus 5x, so 2x plus 5. So that's the w prime part. Okay, so I'm going to take all that and pour it in, pour it into that second box. So we have 7 times x squared plus 5x to the 6 times 2x plus 5. Look at that mess. I'm just going to circle that. At some point, we get to problems where it will say, don't simplify. And this, this would be one of them. We don't always have to simplify the expressions. Okay. Hmm. On your race, hold on. Maybe now? There. All right. Next problem, problem n, is also a product rule. You see those two functions of x multiplied together? Uh, that's your product rule signature right there. Peter's getting angry. Okay. So this is your a. This whole thing over here is your b. So we have a product rule. So f prime of x is a b prime plus b a prime. a is e to the 2x which is e to the w. So a prime will be e to the w times w prime. So e to the 2x times 2. b is equal to x squared plus 7 to the power of 3. And that's a chain rule. I should, should mention we did a derivative of e to the w rule. So three derivative rules in one question. Okay, so a so b prime will get 3 times x squared plus 7 to the power of 2. Power gets reduced by 1, the old power comes down, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, 2x plus 0. So we'll plug everything in. We get a times b prime, so e to the 2x times b prime, all that mess. 3 times x squared plus 7 squared times 2x. I'll just drop the plus 0 to save some space. And then plus b times a prime, x squared plus 7 cubed times 2 e to the 2x. As well just put the two in front. And I'm going to simplify this one because it isn't as bad. So let's see, we can take a two out and common factor that out. And we can common factor an e to the two x out. And we can common factor an x squared plus seven all squared out. And what are we left with? Okay, so the e to the two x was taken care of. The three is still there. We didn't get rid of that. And we didn't get rid of the x in the first term. So there's a 2x there. Well, we got rid of the 2, but we didn't get rid of the x. There's a 3 over here we didn't get rid of. Okay, now what's left in the second piece? The last two parts, the 2 and the e to the 2x, those parts are already factored out. What we're left with is just x squared plus 7 to the power of 1. One power left. And then it's kind of a silly step to do at the end here. 
going to drop those extraneous brackets and reorder the reorder the addition inside that big square bracket there. So x squared plus 3x plus 7. And I hope to God that doesn't factor nicely. So, uh, no, it doesn't factor nicely. Let's see, b squared. No, it doesn't factor at all. Uh, uh, quadratic formula gives a negative discriminant. b squared minus 4ac is negative, so it doesn't factor. Okay, problem O. It may not look like it, but this is a chain rule. d by dx of w to the n is n times w then minus 1 times w prime. Now the reason it doesn't look like it is because it has the square root as the power. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to change the square root into what power it corresponds to, which is power 1 half. And then we'll take the derivative. So the chain rule says that the old power will come down, but we'll have the original function to the old power subtract 1, 1 half minus 1, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, 3x squared plus 3. I'm going to simplify just a bit. 1 half of x cubed plus 3x to the power of negative 1 half. 1, minus, 1 half minus 1 is 1 over 2 minus 2 over 2, which is negative 1 over 2 times 3x squared plus 3. I lied. I'm going to do a little bit more, more simplifying. 1 half. So a negative power means you bring the term to the denominator or the positive of that power. So x cubed plus 3x to the positive 1 half. 3x squared plus 3. And then power 1 half means square root. So we have 3x squared plus 3 over 2 multiplied by the square root of x cubed plus 3x. That would be your final answer. forgot to put a box around the previous one. Okay. I'm just going to check if I missed any boxes up there. Looks okay. All right, getting close to the end for this question. Okay. Problem P is another square root question. This time it's a square root of a fraction. This problem is going to require a chain rule and a quotient rule. Another combination question. So my first step is to be, or is to write this as w to the power of 1 half, where w is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 1. If we take the derivative of w to the 1 half using the chain rule, we'll get 1 half w to the 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half, times w prime. So 1 half times x plus 1 over x minus 1 to negative 1 half. Now w prime is going to, is going to be where we need a quotient rule. bt prime minus tb prime all over b squared. So the bottom function is x minus 1. t prime, the derivative of the top function, is 1 minus the top function, x plus 1, times the derivative of the bottom function, which is 1, all divided by x minus 1 squared. 
And if we simplify that, we get x minus 1 minus x minus 1 all over x minus 1 squared, which is negative 2 over x minus 1 all squared. And then that goes into this box. And this does simplify like crazy. A lot of stuff can, can be cancelled out, but I'm going to leave that alone. One of the takeaways from doing derivatives is that the, you know, the real, I guess the real thing we're testing with, with derivative problems isn't the formulas. The formulas are just formulas. You know, we can memorize them, we can have them on a formula sheet. What we're testing is strategy. What do you see? When you, when you see a big square root of a x plus 1 over x minus 1, do you see a chain rule? Do you see a quotient rule? Do you see both of them together? Now, there's another way to solve this. You can use, a, you can use a, an exponent law to distribute the square root to the top and bottom separately. So you have the root of the top and the root of the bottom. Now you have a different approach. You can use a quotient rule. The top function is the square root of x plus 1. The bottom function is the square root of x minus 1. Use the chain rule for calculating t prime and b prime, and you end up getting an answer that looks very different than what's here, but it's actually equivalent. If you simplify both of them down as much as you can, they'll end up being identical. So it's we're really testing strategy. How do you strategize derivatives? We're not testing formulas. Okay, next problem, problem q. Look at these problem. Look at them all. Problem Q, f of x is the square root of e to the x plus e to the square root of x plus the cube root of x plus 1 over the fifth root of x plus 3 over x to the 5 plus the root of 2. So it's a big test of roots and making sure you're doing the right thing with the right type of expression. So again, it's it looks like we're testing a bunch of random laws, but we're testing, and not strategy in this case, we're testing classification. Can you classify different components of a function correctly. So I'm not taking a derivative yet. I'm, I'm going to start the classification process. This square root of e to the x, this is the w to the 1 half. I'm going to use a different letter here. I'm going to use u instead of w, e to the u. Cube root means power one third. So x to the power one third. Somehow that got gigantic. So fifth root of x in the denominator is so if 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 we just want the bottom, fifth root is power one over five, but but we want bring everything to x to a power. So the fact that this power is in the denominator, we can bring it to the numerator by attaching a minus sign to it. So one, at one over the fifth root of x is the same thing as x to the negative one over five. Three over x to the power of five is the same thing as three x to the power of negative five. And root two is just root two. More than that, it's a constant. So in terms of derivative rules, we have power rules, we have exponent rules, now we have chain rules. Okay, so f prime of x, take the derivative, we get 1 half, w to the power of negative 1 half, times w prime plus e to the u times u prime plus three power rules, one third 
x to the 1 over 3, subtract 1, minus 1 over 5, x to the negative 1 over 5, subtract 1, minus 15, x to the power of negative 5, subtract 1, negative 6, and plus 0, since we're taking the derivative of a constant. Okay, now looking at the at the needs, we need w prime. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. We need u prime. The derivative of the square root of x is one half x to the negative one half. And I'm just going to plug everything in. I'm going to leave a giant mess for this. Well, basically because I'm out of space, and you would not have to simplify. You wouldn't have to simplify either. So w was e to the x. So we have e to the x to the negative one half times the derivative w prime, so times e to the x plus e to the root x times one half x to the negative one half plus one third x to the power of one third minus one, so x to the power of negative two thirds minus 1 fifth, x to the power of minus 1 over 5, minus 5 over 5, so minus 6 over 5, minus 15, x to the power of negative 6. So all that, all that mess is the answer. Okay, then... Last question on this page. These two are the same as above. So that's easy. The second part is different. This is the one of W. I think back all the way, all the way up here. We had one of those, we had a ln of 3x, and our derivative rule for ln of w, the derivative d by dx of ln of w is w prime over w, so I'll use that rule again. Okay, so I have 1 half e to the x to the negative 1 half, times e to the x plus e to the root x times one half x to the negative one half plus w prime over w where w is equal to x plus root x so w prime is going to be 1 plus 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So I'm going to plug everything in. e to the x over 2 root e to the x plus e to the root x over 2 root x. We simplify that. Plus w prime was 1 plus 1 half x to the negative one half over w x plus root x. All right, and I'll take a pause in the video, start the next problems on another video set.